Hi everyone, welcome to this month's Peak on Monthly. As usual on the webinar, today we have uh, me, Michael Dean. Uh, we've also got Petros, who's manning the, uh, all, the, all the recording and the presentation. And then we've got a special, uh, well not really a guest, but my usual co-host, but he's broadcasting from Los Angeles today. So Patrick's not with, with me here in the studio, but we'll still be getting Patrick's input. Good morning, everybody. So a quick recap on what the format of the webinar is here. Um, we try and break these into three parts. So firstly, we have a story about how HR leaders in the PECON community are really driving change, either through PECON or just their own initiatives that they've been doing, what we can all learn from that. We go through the latest feature releases that our team have been working on here. And then at the end, we have my part where we go through some of the latest research that we've been doing in PECON about employee engagement, and in this case, um, many other topics actually. So on to what we're looking at in this, uh, in this webinar. So we're gonna try and demystify a little bit about what we mean about employee experience, culture, and values and engagement, and how they all work together. So firstly, we're gonna start with a practical example from Patrick about how you can build a values-driven business from the ground up. We're then gonna look at the latest features from Pecon, including something on values. And then at the end, I'm gonna go through the roots of all these different terms, how they're useful, where they get a bit confusing, and how you can actually use them in a, in a practical way. So for now, I'm gonna hand over to Patrick, who's over in Los Angeles, and he's gonna take you through the first part of the webinar. Very good, okay, thank you, Michael. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person today in Copenhagen. Um, you know how much I love our ability to have our uh, hosting the, the, the webinars together, but uh, I am here on a bit of a tour of the West Coast visiting uh, some of the uh, Pecan family uh, of customers in in San Francisco and Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. Today I'm coming to you live from Los Angeles. If you could not tell from the background, uh, I'm not at a concert, uh, although it looks like a uh, very, very LA background here. Uh, so anyway, uh, very good morning from, from Los Angeles. And I uh, thought I would spend the, the first part and the story part of today to talk a little bit about how to build a values-based organization. And I'm going to give you two examples of how uh, I, I, in particular, my experiences with building three organizations uh, from a value-based perspective. Um, and while understandably many of your organizations already have values that are set within uh, your business and maybe have been designed years ago or, or are just ingrained within your business. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not saying that you need to kind of throw out the values that you have and start again. Um, because obviously that's not manageable for a lot of companies, but you may be a company that is considering either taking a, a different path with your values, um, or maybe you're an organization that is starting to build values from the ground up, which a lot of our customers are. Uh, and we also have a set of customers that have values that they've had for many years and are just struggling to get traction with them, struggling to make the connection of what those company values are to, uh, to the employees. How can the employees really make a direct connection to the values? How can they live the values every day? So I'm gonna take you on a little bit of a story of how we've created values um, and guiding principles, and then how Pecan in particular can help you along the process of understanding behaviors, how to build behaviors to support the values. Because really, that's where the rubber meets the road uh, to use another American uh, American colloquialism, I can't get through a webinar without one of them, uh, but uh, that's where it really comes together and it can be very helpful. So um, in, my, in my past, I've worked for uh, a few different startups, but three uh, startups in particular, I've been part of the process of building the values, um, the, the values proposition for the organization. And fortunately, at all three of these organizations, uh, one was a uh, flight, was a, uh, an airline in the United States called Virgin America. I was on the team that built that uh, company. I was a founder there, built that company from the ground up. And we built a very uh, strong set of core values by utilizing all a vast majority of members of the teams from all different levels of the organization to help us build what the values were and how we wanted to live every day. So what our what our mantra was going to be, what we could connect with, every employee could connect with to build that value idea and that value fun, um, uh, foundation at the organization. Uh, similarly, after that, I moved to a technology company in San Francisco, which was called Flight Car, uh, and I was responsible for building the values at that organization and, and took a very similar process, involved senior leadership, involved multiple levels of leadership, 
uh, and also involved frontline employees. And we all sat down and said, how do we want to live? Like, how do we want, what type of values do we want to have from an employee perspective to live to every day? Um, and uh, built our values from there. Uh, and then uh, we did the same thing at Pecan, right? So we had, we have very strong brand values. And then we also created uh, guiding principles uh, within our organization that were all based off of how an employee, how the group of employees really felt that they wanted to live and that they could be connected to, uh, to that soul of the organization. And I think there's a couple of key things to keep in mind when you're building values or when you're thinking about values is that values should just never be very um, aspirational words that look great on uh, posters or great on walls, murals. Uh, and the reason why is because that, that was a lot of times those are not made by input from a, uh, from an employee. A lot of times those are maybe made from a consultant or made from a senior executive group where, uh, the employee may, may has difficulty making the connection. They may see it. They may see it as something, oh, this is something we aspire to, but how do I, as an employee, make the connection to be able to live that value or guiding principle every day of the life of my life at work. Right? So, what we suggest is keeping values very simple and easy to remember. Our values are six words. We have, we have three, well, I should say our guiding principles are six words. We have three of them. It's the same thing at my last two companies. So we kept it simple, but where we put the meat to the values was creating a core set of behaviors uh, that are, are representative of how to, of how to live that value or live that guiding principle. So, um, and, and the important part is that as we created these guiding principles, and most importantly, be the behaviors, we listened to our employees. We had focus groups with our employees. We asked them, how do you, what, what type of behaviors would you like to see from your peers, from your managers, from your, your teammates, that would really show you that they are embracing the value and that they are really embracing uh, or, or that guiding principle and they're living it every day. Uh, so the next step from that is that we celebrate successes with values or living guiding principles through um, through these demonstrated behaviors. So when employees demonstrate one of the behaviors that they came up with uh, that, that, that are supportive of a, a value or of a guiding principle, that's part of our recognition program. So years ago, I worked for Starbucks Coffee Company and 20 years ago, and they had a program there that was completely centered around just celebrating great work from a values perspective. So if you do something that is super connected and supportive of the value, then employees would take the time to celebrate that with their peers. And it was a very popular uh, program that we had. Um, and we're now using a very similar type program uh, in, in Pecan in particular about celebrating small successes when it comes to living the, the values and embodying those behaviors um, of the values and the guiding principles every day. So the way how Pecan can really help you with that, in particular, those of you that have values that are set in, uh, there, there are corporate values, and you're having a difficult time with making the connection to how do I bring these alive? How do I create those behaviors, those tangible behaviors uh, that my employees can really understand? And how do I get all this feedback from my employees? I work for a company with 3,000, 4,000, 6,000 employees. How do I gather that? Like, it's, do I think about going to focus groups or, or how do I manage all of that? But Pecan has an option now for you to be able to ask values-based questions for people you to understand and get feedback from your employees on how alive the values are within your organization. And employees love to give feedback in particular in free text comments. And you can start gathering data about how would you like to, they, they will naturally tell you how they could see these things becoming more alive. And then that's how you can start building, potentially building these behaviors, this set of behaviors that will um, empower uh, employees to be able to make the connection between starting to live the values a bit more through behaviors. But the way of collecting those insights and that data can absolutely be uh, through Pecan, which Michael's going to talk about uh, in a little bit with the uh, the values um, uh, part of our product. So, um, end of the, the moral of the story, end of the story is behaviors are really where the, the meat of values come in. Values are great, they can be very impactful, but if we're not making the connection with employees and how to live them every day, uh, and to have a set of behaviors that anybody at the organization can, can um, demonstrate, 
then that's uh, that's where where the the most benefit is going to come, and where the most connection is going to come from with uh, an employee to your to your values. So, um, I'm going to hand it back over to Michael to talk a little bit more about the product side. Uh, but Michael from uh, Sunny LA, uh, missing you and looking forward to our, uh, seeing you next week. But it's back over to you. Thanks very much, Patrick. Um, and now we're going to have a quick look at some of the, the latest feature updates that we've had at Pecon uh, over the last month. The team have been incredibly busy here um, and we've got quite a mixture of different things that will help you in sort of different behaviors and different activities you're taking through Pecon. So the first of these is um, an enhancement to the values feature that we've talked a little bit about here. And that's to be able to do values in a, in a multilingual way. So if you're a global company, you probably need for employees in uh, you know, different languages to be able to connect with the values. You probably want to put them in in the different localizations and also the, the behaviors that are associated with the values in uh, the, your own languages. A great part of this feature really is about how much insight you can get just from three or four questions. So when we added this thing to Pecom, we really didn't want to be adding uh, a values module where you'd be asking, for example, 18 different questions based on all the different behaviors that Patrick was just saying is so important to being able to live these values. So the way this all really works with the Pecom platform is you can really use the, the box that you see um, on the screen here below the values question to describe the associated behaviors that you have with the value. So we do this at Pecon. If you imagine one of our um, guiding principles is elevate people, which is all about kind of growing as an individual. We then have four behaviors that we think are associated with that. Now, if, if we added a separate question for all that, of course the survey would get really long and that's kind of one of the big parts of Pecon is that we want short pulse surveys. But when you add these in there and people are answering the questions, the text analytics off the back of it can basically separate out all these different topics that people are raising. And of course, you get the aggregate score for the topic. So for example, with our, our elevate people value, if everybody bro brought up feedback, the topics thing would catch that. And then we would have a score associated to what people think about the quality of feedback they get all through one question. Um, and another part of this is really how it works with the heat map. Now, of course, with values, you don't have a benchmark like you do with all the drivers in Pecon. But where you can really get an insight is is how values are lived out differently throughout the organization. And that's something we definitely look at and we, we get a lot of um, insight from at Pecon is seeing do the different departments actually, you know, do these values resonate with them in the same way across the business? Now, if we look at the next, um, the next improvement we've made is to how Pecon integrates with other tools. So we now have a new off the shelf integration with HiBob, which has been a popular request from the Pecon user base. Also with our open API, We'd love to work with you to integrate your HRIS system. <laughs> lots, and, lots of letters there. Another very popular request has been to make some enhancements to the downloadable presentation you can get from Pecon. So of course you can create a PowerPoint with one click that you might want to take to your meetings, print out, discuss with your team. Um, we've made some changes, so we've brought this more in line with the insights that you can get on the dashboard. So true benchmark, the insight circles that are so helpful to understand the impact each driver has on engagement. And we've also made some changes which kind of make it look more like a classic report. So you can now see the different drivers, the sub drivers and the questions used in there to really understand kind of what's behind these scores and why the scores are the way they are. The next has been a, a, a really powerful feature that's um, for our enterprise customers. If you're interested in this, our customer success managers will definitely talk you through what you can get out of this new feature. We call it combination attributes. The point of this really is to get more granular reporting. So for example, if you have attributes that are maybe locations and then departments, but you want to know, for example, you know, how's the design team in Copenhagen, you can then create one of these combination attributes where we can actually give you that granular insight. That's something very new to Pecon. It's a very powerful feature, um, but we definitely like to show you how that works. And the next part is some big improvements we've made to the employee management and administration features. This is something that we're continuously working on, but one of the big steps that we've made this month is making the insights around who has access to what much easier and much more powerful, essentially. So you can just search for a manager now, go to that manager's individual page. You can see you know, when they last logged in, where they've been notified, all the permissions they have for their account and who they're leading all on one page, which is a big step forward. And we're gonna be adding more down the line. 
Just a reminder that every month Petros puts a new blog post up that includes all the information about these kind of feature releases and actually a lot more. So a lot of the smaller features that, you know, maybe there was something in particular about how you were using Pecon that you requested we change and we've updated. It might not be a big enough story to make it onto this sort of prestigious webinar, but it'll be in that blog post and you can find out about it there. So on to the, uh, the next big part of our webinar, and that's to talk about, you know, what do we mean by all these different terms, experience, culture, values, engagement. Um, you know, if you go to the, the business section of the airport bookstore, they're all kind of there screaming out for your attention. But really, um, I guess what I want everyone to come away with here is thinking that, you know, these are not competing initiatives. Actually, when you really dig into them, they can all help one another. So on to the first one. Um, organizational culture is probably, you know, it's a word that everyone is so familiar with, but weirdly it's kind of the hardest to define of all of them. Um, a popular choice has been this idea that it's just simply you know, the way things are done around here or the way things get done around here. Um, you know, what culture really encompasses is all sorts of things, prevailing attitudes, belief and principles. And I guess the important thing here is this is not necessarily um, the desired principles. You know, this might not actually be what your values are or what your strategies are, but culture kind of lives, lives on its own uh, and it's much more tricky to, to translate. There's been actually some very interesting uh, research that I was reading up kind of in preparation for this webinar by uh, Ressource. I'm not sure if I can uh, pronounce his name right, but he comes up with this framework to understand um, culture and actually how you can kind of improve culture. He puts it in terms of there are three bell curves. So the first is more kind of internal, like do you have a culture that can engage employees? And then he um, kind of actually very in line with what we would suggest at Pecon, suggests some ways that you can shift this bell curve. So kind of moving the average of what's, a, what's kind of engagement within the organization. The next step is um, more about kind of how the work is done. Like do you have a culture where you're really focused on the things that would create value? You know, if you imagine what a bad culture would be, it's this culture where, you know, perhaps it's like, oh, I know this is a bad idea, but I'm just going to do it just to prove my point, right? You know, that's exactly the kind of thing that he's saying is uh, indicative of a bad culture and you want to move away from. You also want to be moving to a culture where people are understanding what's valuable from the customer's perspective and not from, you know, their own kind of uh, pet projects and the things that, you know, where politics builds up in an organization and all of a sudden you've got this momentum behind some idea and there's a lot of people behind it but then it's not really what the you know what the value is for the customer and then one of the outcomes from it is that of course you create products and services that retain your customers and, and as you know it's a very popular measure he's suggesting MPS to measure that so on to the next one company values um, Patrick talked a lot about this earlier um, the difference kind of between values, I guess, and sort of what Patrick is stressing here that you also need to get the right values. And that's very important. We've all seen um, an example, a brilliant example, really, of how you can get values very wrong. If I imagine a company that really lived their values, well, actually, when you look at Uber's values, they kind of did live these values, um, but they were just not the right ones. Maybe they were the right ones for four guys trying to get a startup out of a out of a kind of garage, but when you're a, you know, multicultural and uh, trying to be an inclusive company and also being accepted as a sort of serious corporation around the world, having things like always be hustling and super pumpedness, <laughs> pumpedness is not really the right words for you. But I mean, at the core of what they are, um, we can kind of think of values as a way that you're trying to steer an organization's culture by giving someone an idea of what is the right or wrong behavior in many situations. Next slide, employee experience. This is one of the newer terms here. Um, and it's got a lot of hype recently. Um, but I think actually there's some really important core things that we can use by looking at the roots of where this actually came from. So the idea with employee experience was that it actually came out of this concept of design thinking. Design thinking has been something that's come from the software industry that's really about understanding what users want in a more empathetic way and having a real process around this. Another part of it has been to create a kind of cohesive end-to-end -end experience. So where this came from in the kind of software design world, it was about having an experience where as a, as a customer you came, you know, you heard about a service on Google or something, you came to the website, you signed up, you talked to someone about buying it, and everything felt like a cohesive story and a cohesive experience. And that's something that we've tried to kind of incorporate in the employee experience world where you know, someone hears about a, an organization, they go to the recruiting page, they talk to someone, they 
they join the company and even when they leave the company, they have this kind of cohesive, positive experience that they can then go out and talk to the rest of the world about. Now, the companies that have really adopted this first have been Airbnb, who made waves by kind of renaming a big part of their HR team to employee experience, but also Adobe. Um, and Deloitte actually has some very um, useful content around this in this year's Human Capital Trends um, survey and all the publication that's come around that. And what they've really hit on is that basically employee engagement has been very static for many years in many organizations and people have almost become disheartened with the idea that you can actually even improve employee engagement. But there's definitely been re-energized by the idea of employee experience and giving people a new framework for how they can think about this from a way and um, taking from this quote that they need to redesign the organization. So the next slide, I've tried to piece together really how all these, um, how all these terms come together. So culture, I think we can really think of as a definition. And by a definition, I mean how it can really help us kind of understand what the organization is. Not from, you know, we can take this famous quote from Peter Drucker, kind of culture eats strategy for breakfast, where you really look at with culture and measuring culture is, you know, this is really what's happening in your organization, despite what your, you know, what your strategy kind of hopes for. Um, PECON's 14 drivers are essentially there to help you measure culture. The way they can help you do this more objectively is because everything in PECON is benchmarked. So sometimes we hear, or you hear co companies saying, you know, we have such a unique culture. Actually, what you get from when you have benchmark data is you can find that out. So when you think about, oh, we have a unique culture, we would like to kind of, you know, survey in a specific way, you're not really finding out if your culture is unique then. You're actually just sort of reinforcing what you already thought rather than actually knowing that your culture is different by looking at benchmark data from any of the sort of 14 drivers. Then I think what we can take from employee experience is actually a framework for structuring how you can improve your culture. So it's looking at things in a way that where we're looking at how employees interact with the business and then we're thinking about how we can redesign those interactions. Now, all of the employee experience literature relies on basically having more real-time data to be able to make these essentially design decisions, all about kind of first empathizing with what the organization is, so what the needs are, perhaps more like uh, you know, a higher capacity for growth within the organization, designing a program, testing it out, and then implementing it. And really, that's, I think that's the major contribution employee experience can have here. There's been a little bit of kind of conflicting advice I think I've seen with how employee experience relates to employee engagement. I think my personal take on that is that if you want to sell airport books especially and you're writing about employee experience, you want to make this a completely holistic thing, like this is the one thing you need to think about and it kind of forget all the other things you've been working on, which I actually don't think is particularly helpful. Um, I think where employee experience is really helpful is when you understand that a good employee experience leads to greater employee engagement. And really taking processes from the employee experience literature will help you improve employee engagement in general. And of course, the way PECON does that through EMPS is really a very standard measure of employee experience. If you think how MPS became the kind of gold standard for measuring your customer experience, EMPS is really you know, following down that path. And the final part, values, they don't really fit into any of these because it's kind of, it's a bit cyclical, you know, if you imagine an employee who is highly engaged is more likely to espouse the company values because they feel this connection to the organization. However, what they're really a useful tool for is sort of steering your organization's culture, as I mentioned, by showing what is a kind of right or wrong behavior. Now, I thought we'd end um, by showing a slide that actually we end all of our all hands with at PECON. This is kind of how we visualize what, um, you know, what all the values and guiding principles are within PECON. And we show this as, as often as possible. And Patrick's a big fan, especially of visualizing things. And perhaps it's not that easy to visualize, you know, your tagline, your brand values, where you're going with the mission of your product. But we do it with this slide and I think it actually works very well. So on the left, you can see our, our guiding principles, elevate people, drive change. So this is about building a product that will really make positive change within your business and valued partners. So everything we do is about creating a really deep partnership with you, our customers. So that's on to, that's kind of the end of uh, this part, but we'd love to hear your questions and what you think about all this. If you have particular questions, for example, about some of the features or about some of the terms we've discussed, um, just let us know and then I can have my best guess at answering them now.
are you able to show us an example of the output from the values feature? You know, we may actually be able to do that. If we just step backwards in our presentation, we actually had a GIF that kind of shows how it all works together. Let's just try and do that. So it's a very, very quick overview of how it all looks. Then you can see in the dashboard, we actually have this separate module. But the key thing, as I explained, is really about breaking down the results. So you can do all of the same segmentation that you can do with the drivers in Pecon to the values. And that's really where this becomes helpful, is when you see, okay, there's a big part of the organization that clearly doesn't align with this value or doesn't know how they can live it out. That's what you can see through Pecon. And then, of course, the other big part of it is the text analytics that comes out of the comments. How would you recommend for companies to roll out updated values? Good question. I think maybe um, we would go back to Patrick. I think Patrick would yeah. probably have a good input on that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, rolling out new values or updated values in an organization, uh, that, that, it, that can be a big, well, when I say it's a big undertaking, it, it just, it's how you communicate it to the organization. So I have done this before where we have updated values. And I think the first step is when you start the process of saying that we want to update our values to be more fresh, to be more in line with what uh, is going to be really part of what employees want, number one. And then I would say uh, in general, our process would be to uh, put together a communication that we want to refresh our values to bring us into the future, put together a focus group of uh, mixed level teams to be able to uh, work on the project so that it's not just an executive level project or not just an HR project, uh, because the more integration that you have with multiple levels of uh, at the organization will will bring more interesting insights and really help you build better refreshed values. Um, and then I think a key point of it is explaining that it's not just about building or refreshing the values, but the core of it will be being able to present value or to, to present behaviors that every employee can get behind and to start understanding. Um, and I think there is benefit in saying holding each other accountable to living every day, the behaviors and also another area or opportunity for us to celebrate where we're doing really well with um, supporting the behaviors because ultimately those living those values is what's building that strength and creating that fiber within your culture because you know people say we want to have a great culture and a great culture is made up of so many different things but people living the values every single day is really a very strong part of how you create that baseline to build an amazing culture. So I would say the, the, those three steps, we have first, is, and obviously this would be um, a, a larger project, but you know, going out to saying we wanna refresh our values so that they're more in line with what we're looking for for the future. We wanna incorporate input from all levels of the organization. We also, we're gonna ask you if you uh, decide to use the values product, we're gonna ask you about the values today, what, what you think about them, what we could do better with the values, gathering as much insight and information, uh, have some workshops to be able to pare down the data and start building some uh, behaviors. And launching the behaviors is really where, uh, where it really takes off because employees can very much connect to that particular uh, living values every day. Okay, we have another question here that's about, we have six company values. Would Pecan be able to help us narrow down the behaviors to one each or should we do that ourselves? I would actually recommend that I don't think you need to narrow down the behaviors um, to one each for each value. Actually, the description box that we have in the values product kind of below the question, it supports what's called markdown, which is a way of formatting text. So you can use bullet points to spell out actually all the behaviors that are associated with them. That's, that's what we do in Pecan. So we have four associated behaviors with each guiding principle and we list them there. So when people answer, the, um, with the kind of quantitative answer they're, they're answering really, do they feel aligned to that guiding principle as a whole? But then when they give the comments, then they can kind of be a bit more granular and talk about particular behaviors. And then as I mentioned, the way that the topics works is then we'll pull out all of those specific talking points. So you'll really get that kind of granular insight without having to narrow down the associated behaviors that you have with each value. And let me just add one thing to that question, which is um, if you have not created behaviors for your values yet, I would not concentrate on even one behavior. Like Michael said, we have four, some of our values actually have uh, five or six behaviors associated to them. So 
the more behaviors that you can create to a value, the better in a lot of ways, because not every behavior is going to resonate with every single employee. But if you have a set of behaviors that let's say you have five for each value um, that and one employee may say that one, that one really resonates with me. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to live that every day and I'm going to watch for people to be living that as well. I think that is an important part is having a varied amount of behaviors under each value because employees really can connect to something within those behaviors. So we have a final question that's about, um, or maybe not the final question, but another question about values. And can Pecon help you define what the values are or what people think the behaviors and, and blockers are associated with those values before you put the values questions into the system? I think you can do that very well with open-ended questions, actually. Kind of before we added this, uh, this feature to the product, we used to have an open-ended question that was in there asking what do you think our core values are? Um, you could do something similar, but I, I think I would kind of elaborate a little bit more. Like, what do you, you know, how do you experience our corporate values um, and how can you live those out in your life or something like that? I'm sure we can help you uh, craft a, a good question for that. Um, and then I would think you'll get a lot of good feedback. And again, it will all be analyzed by the, the topics engine. So you'll kind of be able to pull out the different things that already resonate well with people. One final one um, about values, whether you could ask about what people think the behaviors are that are associated with those values before you add it to the product. Yes, I think you could definitely do that through the open-ended questions. I think that would actually be a very good open-ended question. Um, but please contact us and then we can give you some, uh, some personalized advice for that as well. I'm sure it will work very well through open-ended questions. That's probably all we have time for today. Um, but this webinar, like all the others, will be up on the website, on the, on the webinars page. We'll also send out this presentation to you that has the link to that page um, so you can watch it again or share it with your team. And the next broadcast we'll have with uh, Patrick back in, um, in Copenhagen, hopefully, will be on the 30th of May. So we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I will be 5,000 miles closer to uh, Michael Dean for the next uh, session. Thank you. And, uh, have a wonderful day if you're in America. Have a great uh, start to your day. If in Europe, have a great uh, rest of your evening. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.